does it make sense that your ego cannot truly work with your karma in order to solve your karma fully? Uh, we our, we can our ego can work with our karma. It can say, "Well, I hate what I did. I hate myself. I'm a bad person, and I want to become a good person. So I'm going to say a lot of mantra in order to become more conscious or heal my karma." And the paradox of it is that eventually, that that process of ego against ego one part of our ego judging another part of our ego it 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 runs its its course it it becomes a it's got its own glass ceiling of evolution of consciousness built into it so the metaphor could be and you could use a thorn to dig a thorn out of your finger and that would be the dynamic of utilizing self judgment or fear or self-loathing or self-hatred to drive our another to drive us mercilessly to transcend uh, another negative karma or habit or tendency or past event or process or relationship dynamic and that said eventually that's going to not be enough to dissolve the rest of your karma. It can get you over a lot of bumps in the road. It's not an invalid process. It's a necessary starting point. It's for a long, for maybe for lifetimes. And we just hope to communicate that it is useful to get past that tendency of being in an internal state of emotional conflict with yourself, these fragmented parts battling each other endlessly and, and, and always finding fault with yourself in one way or another, that, that that only has so much utility evolutionarily. The ego would receive any facilitation that, that John would offer as judgment or as criticism or not good enoughness or potential abandonment or supposedly someone not doing something that they should have been doing or doing something they shouldn't have been doing which is not the case. That said, the ego, if, if, if it comes down to any facilitation that's actually going to be direct and, and really bring constructive results, the ego will invariably go into hate mode. Be amazed how many people have hated me. It's like more than a dozen. That said, that process of hatred is not a bad thing. It's a necessary part of the process of evolution of consciousness. Because until you get to that feeling of, of being uh, egoically insecure enough to go into hate, you're not right on the edge of transformation or evolution of consciousness or, uh, or potential for cathartic change to occur. Did we make sense with judgment and hatred not being bad things, not something to judge yourself for, and optimally something to work through expeditiously? If, if, you, if you judge your own judgment or you hate your own hatred, you'll get stuck because you'll be busy judging your judgment or hating your hatred. So forgiveness of all of it is free. Uh, an odd thing that that we heard the other day is that doctors are not weighing people at their doctor's offices a lot these days because people that are overweight fear being shamed for for not for being overweight or being called overweight by the doctor. So the ego, if, if a doctor said, you'll be healthier if you lose 10 pounds. The ego hears, this doctor says I'm fat and I've messed up and I, I haven't been doing the right thing. 
and I'm bad, and now I'm going to go eat in order to feel better. And I've been victimized by somebody who's being supposedly being critical of me. We're not saying there aren't doctors that are critical, because there are. Yes, they, they do get bad ratings on the web. Now, the question is, are, do they get bad ratings because they're bad doctors, because they're insensitive, non-empathetic, uncaring, or disrespectful to their patients? And, and this is a, they, they could be, they could be narcissistic doctors that are just saying, you should do this and this and this. And if you don't, you're not a good patient, you're not a good person, you're causing yourself problems, and I'm not going to help you. Or they could say, I love you, I care about you. Your, your health means a lot to me, and if you change your diet, it will benefit you, and you'll be able to be there for your kids or your spouse or, or, your, or the people that you love. So the question is, today, in our contentious world, and th this is just a metaphor, by the way, for a far bigger issue, we we showed the 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 laws that they were developing in Florida, and I happen to live in Florida, by the way, uh, that say that if you if you say that someone is if uh, that there has been prejudice in the past in the legal system or the political system or the social system, then you're breaking the law, or you're doing something illegal or something uh, wrong. In, in essence, we offer no path or process for working out the, the issues of bias and prejudice and inequality and gender discrimination and racial discrimination. We, we, we offer no acceptable functional legal path for that reconciliation to occur because we're afraid that we might be shamed publicly or judged publicly, or found to have been prejudiced, or biased, or uh, uh, non-respectful of other genders, or religions, or races, or uh, social groups. So, does it make sense that in as we complexify the ego process, we're actually shooting ourselves in the foot, metaphorically speaking, in terms of our capacity to actually work through and out of unreconciled ego process and tribal dynamics. So is that itself an expression of fear? Is that itself an expression of ego dynamics? Ego dynamics defending the supposed safety of ego dynamics and does that all keep us frozen and incapable of healing and learning and collaborating and loving each other and, and also stuck in our pain and our stress and our fear? In the old days, they, there were movies, black and white movies. Uh, they didn't even have color movies in those days where they had, in the Old West, people who would have duels. And and the and the, the yes John Wayne movies and 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 the the amazing thing was that if the sheriff was watching this gunfight occur, if one person drew their gun first and killed the other one, they would be put in jail for murder and hanged. If the other person that drew their gun second or more slowly killed the person who drew first, they're okay. They were defending themselves. They don't go to jail, they don't hang. Why? And in the eyes of the law, one of them could turn out to be a murderer, or they could be an innocent victim killing someone else to defend themselves. It, by a tenth of a second, who drew first? How ludicrous is that?
So all th this there's a metaphor, by the way, for relationship dynamics of all kinds. Because if someone says, you judged me first, so I'm going to gun you down. I'm going to claim victimhood. I'm going to turn into a perpetrator. I'm going to mow you down with criticisms, judgment, and hatred until you're on the floor. And I'm going to self-righteously do that because obviously you drew first. In, in arguments where people are looking to paint themselves in the argument as the victim or as the one who drew second and thus is right and innocent and good and acceptable and non-abandonable and paint the other person as they drew first. Therefore, anything I do to them is valid. No matter how much I hurt them, I've proven that I was right. They did the wrong thing. They deserve whatever I dish out. And I'm even going to set them up, by the way. If you can imagine the two gunfighters, they're out on the street, and one of them pretends <laughs> that they're going to draw their gun. They don't do it. They pretend. So the other one gets scared and reacts and draws theirs first. And then the one that was pretending to draw their gun shoots them before they can get it out of the holster. Do people do this every day? in the relationship dynamics? Do they, do they say, I'm gonna make sure I'm safe from this other person, so I'm gonna trigger them into saying something negative. I'm gonna keep at them until they say something negative, and then I'm gonna crush them emotionally under my judgmental barrage and claim I was a victim, claim that they were a perpetrator, and I'm safe. So where's the potential for conscious collaboration in such a process? And, and are willing to put down the weapons of judgment and punishment and disdain and dismissal and abandonment and ego defense and hatred and choose instead of fear, love, kind, caring, compassion, service intention, patience, tolerance, discipline, love and and conscious community as as the highest values the goals that they operate from and then all then the other person can do anything they want they can be angry they can judge they can punish they can abandon they can hate they can do whatever they want and there's still going to be love so how important is it to live that walk that talk and and, and model that in our world. If we want people to get out of this tendency to battle each other and fear each other and distrust each other and not trust that they're lovable or not trust that other people are willing to love them and, and just accept that they're lovable, accept others' love, accept that they're worthy of being loved and, and, and be willing to turn the other cheek.